Welcome to the fourth day reading. Now, last time we read about God's covenant with Abraham and how Lot was captive due to his choice. How Lot was captive, was captured, and how Abraham rescued him. And after that, God made the covenant with Abraham that he, that his son, that his children, his generation, the generation of time, shall be countless as the star in the sky is countless. So shall his generation be. Now we're moving on. We're going to be reading from chapter 16 to chapter 20 today. Let's begin. Chapter 16, Agar and Ishmael. Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Agar. So Sarai said to Abraham, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go into my maid, perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abraham heeded the voice of Sarai. Then Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Agar and made the Egyptian and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. After Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, so he went into Agar and she conceived. And when they saw that she had con and when she saw that she has conceived, that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarai said to Abraham, My wrong be upon you. I gave my maid into your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between you and me. So Abraham said to Sarai, Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Sarai dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to shore. And he said, Agar, Sarai's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit yourself under her hand. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly, so that they shall not be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord, because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a white man. His hand shall be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Then she called the, uh, she called the name of the Lord, who spoke to her, You are the God who sees. For she said, Have I also here seen him who sees me? Therefore the word was called Berlahai, Berlahai Roy. Observe, it is between Kadesh and buried. So Agar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his son, whom Agar, whom Agar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years when Agar bore Ishmael to Abram. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I have given to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger. All the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession and I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant you and your descendants this is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you every male child among you shall be circumcised and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you he who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised every male child in your generations 
he who is born in your house or brought with money or bought with money from any foreigner who is not your descendant descendant he who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money must be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant and the uncircumcised male male child who is not circumcised in the flesh of his first king that person shall be cut off from his people he has broken my covenant then god said to abraham abraham as for sarah your wife you shall not call her name sarai but sarah shall be her name and i will bless her and also give you a son by her then i will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations kings of peoples shall be from her then abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old and, sh and shall sarah who is 90 years old bear a child and abraham said to god oh that ishmael might live before you then god said no sarah your wife shall bear you a son and you shall call his name isaac i will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him and as for ishmael i have heard you behold i have blessed him and i will make him fruitful i will multiply his i will multiply him exceedingly he shall beget 12 princes and i will make him a great nation but my covenant i will establish with isaac whom sarah shall bear to you at this time next day then he finished talking with him and god went up from abraham so abraham took ishmael his son all whom all who were born in his house and all who were born with his money every male among the men of abraham's house and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin that very same day as god had said to him abraham was 99 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin and ishmael his son was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin that's that very same day abraham was circumcised and his son ishmael and all the men of his house born in the house or bought with money from the foreigner were circumcised with him chapter 19 then the lord appeared to him by the terebinth tree of mamre as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day so he lifted his eyes and looked and behold there and behold three men three men were standing by him and when he saw them he ran from the tent door to meet them <clears throat> and bowed himself to the ground and said my lord if i have now found favor in your sight do not pass on by your servant please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree and i will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your heart after that you may pass by in as much as you have in as much as you have come to your servant they said do as you have said so abraham hurried into the tent to sarah and said quickly make where the three measures of fine meal knead it and make cakes and abraham ran to the head took a tender and good calf gave it to a young man and he hastened to prepare it so he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them and he stood by them under the tree as they ate then they said to him where is sarah your wife so he said here in the tent and he said i will certainly return to you according to the time of life and be old sarah your wife shall have a son sarah was listening in the tent door which was behind him now abraham and sarah were old well advanced in age and sarah had passed the age of childbearing therefore sarah laughed within herself saying after i have grown old shall i have pleasure my lord being old also and the lord said to abraham why did sarah laugh saying shall i surely bear a child since i am old is anything too hard for the lord at the appointed time i will return to you according to the time of life and sarah shall have a son but sarah denied it saying i did not laugh for she was afraid and he said no but he did laugh then the men rose from there and looked towards old sodom and abraham went with them to send them on their way on the way and the lord said shall i hide from abraham what i am doing since abraham surely shall surely become a great 
and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him, in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord, to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. And the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will go down now and see whether they have done any, whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I will know. Then the men turned away from there and went toward Sodom. But Abraham stood still before the Lord. And Abraham came near and said, Would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there were fifty righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the fifty righteous that were in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous shall be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? So the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous people within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed, now I who am but dust and ashes, I've taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose there were five less than the fifty righteous, would you destroy all of the city for lack of five? So he said, If I find for the five, I will not destroy it. And he spoke to him yet again and said, Suppose there were, suppose there should be forty found there. So he said, I will not do it for the sake of forty. Then he said, Let the Lord, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose thirty should be found there. So he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Indeed, now I have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty should be found there. So he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of twenty. Then he said, Let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak but once more. Suppose ten should be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of ten. So the Lord went his way as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham. And Abraham returned to his place. Chapter 19, Sodom's Depravity Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Hear now, my Lord, please turn in to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go on your way. And they said, No, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he insisted strongly. So they turned in to him and entered his house. Then he made them a feast and baked be and on living bread, and they ate. Now before they lay Adan, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house, and they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, that we may know them carnally. So Lot went out to them through the doorway, shut the door behind him, and said, Please, my brethren, do not do so wickedly. See now, I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you, and you may do to them as you wish. Only do nothing to these men, since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. Then they said, This one came in here, to, this one came in to stay here, and he keeps acting as a judge. Now we will do worse with you than with them. So they pressed hard against the man Lot and came near to break down the door. But the men reached out their hands and put Lot into the house with them and shut the door. And they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they became weary trying to find the door. Then the men said to Lot, Have you anyone here? Son-in-law, your sons, your daughters, and whomever you have in the city, take them out of this place, for we will destroy this place. Because the outcry against them has grown great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his son-in-laws, who had married his daughters, and said, Get up, get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But to his son-in-laws, he seemed to be joking. When the morning dawned, 
the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, the man took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hand of his two daughters. The Lord, being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. So it came to pass, when they had brought them outside, that he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you, nor stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. Then Lord said to them, Please, no, my lords. Indeed, now your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have increased your mercy, which you have shown me by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountains, lest some evil overtake me and I die. See now, this city is near enough to flee to, and it's a little one. Please let me escape there. Is, is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said to him, See, I have favored you concerning this also, in that I will not overthrow this city for which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. Therefore the name of the city was called Zohar. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zohar. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. So he overthrew these cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham, and Abraham went early in the morning to see to the place where he had stood before the Lord. Then he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the plain, and he saw and behold the smoke of the land which went up like the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass, when God destroyed the city of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow. Then he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. Then Lot went up out of Zohar and dwelt in the mountains, and his two daughters were with him, for he was afraid to dwell in Zohar. And he and his two daughters dwelt in a cave. Now the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man on the earth to come in to us, as is the custom of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, that we may preserve the lineage of our father. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with, their, with her father. And he did not know when she lay down, or when she arose. It happened on the next day, that the firstborn said to the younger, Indeed, I lived with my father last night. Let us make him drink wine tonight also. And you go in and lie with him, that we may preserve the lineage of our father. Then they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger arose and lay with him, and he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. Thus both the daughters of Lot were with child by their father. The firstborn bore his son and called his name Moabite. He is the father of the Moabite. And called his name Moab, he is the father of the Moabites to this day. And the younger, she also bore a son and called his name Ben Ami, he is the father of the people of Ammon to this day. Abraham and Abimelech, chapter 20, the last chapter. And Abraham, and Abraham journeyed from there to the south and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur and stayed in Gerar. Now Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation also? Did you not say to me, She is my sister? And she, even on she herself, said, He is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands, I have done this. And God said to him in a dream, Yes, I know that you did not, that you did this in the integrity of your heart. For I also withheld from you, but I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. Now, therefore, restore the man's wife, for he is a prophet, and he will pray for you, and you shall live. But if you do not restore her, know that you shall surely die. You and all who are yours. So Abimelech rose early in the morning, called all his servants, and told all these things in their hearing. And the men were very much afraid. 
And Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? How have I offended you that you have brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? You have done deeds to me that ought not to be done. Then Abimelech said to Abraham, What did you have in view that you have done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will kill me on account of my wife. But indeed, she is truly my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. And it came to pass, when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I saw, that I said to her, This is your kindness that you should do for me. In every place, wherever we go, say of me, He is my brother. Then Abimelech took sheep, oxen, and male and female servants, and gave them to Abraham, and he restored Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, See, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. Then to Sarah he said, Behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. Indeed, this vindicates you before all who are with you and before everybody. Thus she was rebuked. So Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, his wife, and his female servants. Then they bore children. For the Lord had closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Praise God. We come to the end of today's reading. We'll continue tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bless you.